Ma nije više. Dobar dan, dobrodošli u JavaScript, Self-Portraits in JavaScript. Ja me zovem George. Govorim malo hrvatski, ali ja ću da ga... Hvala. Ja ću da govorim engleski. It's better for everybody, I think. Welcome to Self-Portraits in JavaScript. Uh, I wanted to introduce myself here before I get too far along into what this talk is actually about. You sort of have a hint already. I find that talks where the presenter humanizes themselves a little bit are easier for me to remember down the road. I find it more engaging. I find it more interesting personally. So in that spirit, I want to introduce myself to you a little bit, have a few fun random facts about me that you might recall later. So my name is George Mandis. Uh, I'm an independent developer for about 13 years uh, in JavaScript years. I think that makes me in my 90s or 80s. I'm not sure. I can retire, which is great. I'm a Google developer expert in web technologies, as was introduced. Um, I also do a lot of general mentorship activity. I like to lead boot camps uh, and workshops and things back in Portland, Oregon. Um, I'd be happy to talk with you afterwards if that sort of thing interests you. Um, I once lived as a digital nomad for a year across 18 different countries. There's a fun fact that sometimes people remember. I love talking about remote work. I think there's a talk about that tomorrow that's kind of interesting. Uh, my most known open source contribution is a very frivolous project called Konami.js. I'm curious, has anyone heard of it in this room? There's usually like two hands. That's about what I expected. <laughs> um, quick story about that. So it was a library in 2009, I want to say, that lets you put the Konami code on your website. Obviously, that's a very introductory development kind of a thing, but the thing that made that separate, uh, er, separated that from the pack was it worked on mobile phones with touch events. And for whatever reason, it got very popular and a bunch of big sites used it at the time, including marvel.com. Someone pointed it out to me. I got really excited. I pushed an update to it on GitHub and it turned out they were linking directly to the source and I completely broke everything on marvel.com. I don't know why. So that's my other, you know, I, I, that's my claim to fame. Whenever I go to these things, I'm always impressed by the things people are working on. That's my most impressive thing, I like to say. Um, lastly, I, ran, I once ran a marathon and accidentally cheated in uh, North Korea. Um, maybe you'll remember that. <laughs> and just, just to have proof, there's my place. I came in 65th. Nope, not true. And there's me. Uh, I don't know how I actually feel about this photo, but moving on. Uh, more relevantly, <laughs> I like to make things. I, um, I enjoy taking the tools that I use in my day-to-day -day work and kind of pushing them to the limit and finding unexpected, unintended ways to use them for projects and creative uh, things. So in that spirit today, we're going to look at a creative and what I think is a sort of interesting thing I built using my tools uh, called, that I call self-portraits in JavaScript. So the project, a self-portrait in JavaScript. Who, who came to this talk because they really have no idea what I was going to talk about and just thought it was an interesting title? Yeah, that's about right. Okay. That, that was kind of my goal, secretly. Oops. So let me talk a little bit about where the name came from while I adjust this. Excuse me. Um, so I was browsing around and procrastinating on Wikipedia one day, like I want to do, and I was reading about the Camera Obscura, because I every couple months I forget what that actually is, even though I feel like I know what it is. And I came across another device called the Camera Lucida. Who's familiar? Well, first, who's familiar with the Camera Obscura? Or at least by name, sounds familiar. Okay, and who's familiar with the Camera Lucida? That's about what I expected. It's usually fewer. Um, so the gist of it is it was a device that you can look through, and between the mirror and the polished surfaces on the, on the thing you're looking through, you could see a projection of one object over another. So basically when you're drawing on your piece of paper or whatever it is, it would be kind of like you're tracing the object in real life. And I was reading about that and I thought, sorry, I have text that you could have read. Um, I was reading about that and I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. That would be, that'd be a fun thing to kind of whip together in, in JavaScript real quickly here before I get to my real work for the day. And so I, I sat down and I thought, you know, maybe we could take like the webcam and use media capture and overlay it on top of a canvas and doodle and all that. And, you know, so I worked on that and this was my first attempt. Something like this. So here we have my webcam. We have my uh, canvas over that. A couple adjustments aren't really important here. And I could start doodling. I'll pause the frame. Oops. Let me try to align myself. There we go. I'll pause the frame. Doodle over my face, 
You're getting the idea already, I think. I'll just add some eyes and a nose and a mouth and other face-like things. And I'll adjust the opacity, and there we go. It looks exactly right, and they like me, right? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. That's my presentation. No. Um, <laughs> no, so that was my first attempt, and that was pretty easy, obviously. Uh, well, I shouldn't say easy. It's all relative, but it was, yeah, I thought maybe there's some ways I can improve it. And so I, um, you know, I, I made the drawing tool a little more sophisticated. I decided maybe... There's a way I can use some of the CSS filters on the canvas to adjust the contrast and the brightness. So now I can kind of see the hard edges a little more clearly on my face as I try to trace them. It's kind of interesting, kind of works. You get the idea. And then I came up with a third attempt before I got bored with this. And basically it was the same idea, but I made a slightly more interesting tool to draw. I kind of had fun just playing with P5 and brushes and things like that. You get the idea. Maybe you can turn off the color if I want to see it in black and white and increase the contrast, make it brighter, et cetera. You get the idea. Um, OK, so that was fun. But this could be better. This could be more interesting. This could be more challenging. I feel like I could make it more computerish in some ways. I could leverage all this programming stuff that I feel like I know or should know, or maybe things I'm reading about that I'd really like to know more about in the machine learning space or, or other areas like that. I thought to myself, what if I could actually you know, recognize that there's a human face in the camera and act on that in some way? What if I could identify things about that human face, like the age or the gender and the mood, not unlike the demo that's out in the hallway? I kind of laughed when I saw that. Um, what if I could suggest color palettes based on the person's perceived mood at the time? Maybe I could um, you know, isolate the different landmarks that are in that photo. I could find the eyes and the nose and the mouth. And, and because I know that those are the eyes and the nose and the mouth, I could do specific things that would make it easier to draw or render that in a particular way. Um, maybe I could have the computer draw it for me, right? We're programmers, we're lazy. We want it, the computer to do as much for us as we can in some ways. Um, and then I thought, what if I could use some of this really interesting cutting edge machine learning stuff to use this neural style transfer stuff I've seen and take artwork I've made in real life and apply that to my face in some interesting way. That would also be, I felt like, in the spirit of a self-portrait in JavaScript as I was going for that here. And so this, all, this, all, this, all these thoughts and all this um, research led me down a wormhole, another Wikipedia-esque wormhole uh, for the procrastination. Um, and I started reading about facial recognition and detection in JavaScript, and it turned out to be really interesting. There's a lot of different ways you can go about it, and they all have their unique uh, challenges and advantages and disadvantages. And so basically, I'm going to dive into those with you real quick and show you what they look like, show you the self-portrait tool as I made it um, at the end of that, and then I'm going to show you a couple other interesting things if I have time at that point. So let's talk about facial recognition and detection in JavaScript and what that looks like. There are basically three overarching approaches that I stumbled across. You can use web-based services. So there are lots of image recognition services out there by the major companies that you would probably expect. Uh, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon all have one. There's some, there's some other ones I'm less familiar with, but those are the major ones. Um, part of me feels like this is not truly in the spirit of a totally JavaScript-based approach, but we can get to that. Uh, there are pure client-side approaches where all of the recognition and computation happens in the browser. They will work offline entirely. Those are very interesting. There's a lot of different solutions. Um, some of them are new and built on things like TensorFlow.js and use that cutting-edge machine learning stuff that I was talking about. Some of it's based on you know, much older attempts going back as far as like 1999. It's really kind of interesting. And then the third one I want to talk about is technically also entirely client-side, but it's its own category because it's a native browser API that most people don't know about. Who knows about the shape detection API? I'm curious. OK, that's what I thought. It's, um, it's very experimental at the moment, and we'll dive into that, and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like and what goes into it. It's kind of interesting. So with that brief introduction, let's look at what using these different approaches actually looks like. Let's talk about the web-based services approach. So I have some examples I've built using Azure. Um, I gave part of this presentation at a Microsoft Build conference, so I felt like I had to use a Microsoft tool to do it. And I just haven't changed the code since then, honestly. 
Um, so in a real high level kind of way, I'm just going to show you what goes into using a service like um, uh, Microsoft's Azure's Face API to recognize if there is a uh, human face in my webcam. That's what all of this code does. Okay, so on this screen, I'm just setting up parameters that I'm going to have to send to the URL, uh, the endpoint for their service. Um, here, I'm capturing the video element that I'm sending my media capture content to. I'm capturing the canvas that I am taking a frame from that video to. Uh, I'm getting the uh, drawing context, et cetera, et cetera. And then I'm getting a data URI at the very bottom there in my image data variable. I, I know this is very fast. Don't, don't worry too much. <laughs> uh, and then here, I'm calling fetch on the data URI to get a blob. And then I am calling another fetch on the uh, API endpoint, sending that blob to Microsoft, and then getting a response. And in that response, I have information about the human face that may or may not have been in that photo. So that's kind of a lot to absorb and follow. It's a lot more fun to just do it and see it. So let me show you a demo real quick. Um, let me show you two demos. So all that code, let me show you what that does in Azure right here. So here's a demo I made. I'm going to start my webcam. You're going to get tired of my face in a minute. OK. And I'm going to click Find Faces, make a funny face. Wait a moment. Hope the conference Wi-Fi doesn't fail me. OK. And hopefully that's somewhat legible down there. I think it's OK. So there's my face. So you can see over here. Well, let me start over here. So what we have down here are coordinates that the uh, Azure service has found for all the different landmarks on my face. This is where my right pupil is. This is where the tip of my nose is relative to the XY coordinates on the canvas. You can see little green dots over here on my face uh, where, where those coordinates are. So here are all the different coordinates for aspects of my face, as you might expect. And then, oh, it gets kind of more interesting down here. So we don't just know where the face is in the image. We know aspects of the person who's in this. So there's a 40, maybe 3% chance that I'm smiling. That seems possible, I think. I was sort of mid-smirk. Uh, it's identified my, my gender and my, my age very eerily accurately. Uh, it says I have six-tenths of a mustache, I suppose. Actually, it's 60% percentile that I have a mustache, or 60% probability I have a mustache is what that's really saying. but. It's funnier to think about in that way. Um, it can tell that I'm wearing glasses. If I were to run this again and take my glasses off and go back down to the reading glasses and try to make a funnier face. Oh, darn it. Right, let me try that again. <laughs> there we go. OK. And we go back down to reading glasses. Where was that? I got to put on my glasses to see it. I already. Um, yeah, no glasses. There we go, right there. So I can tell that I'm not wearing glasses. And my, I don't know what my emotion was before, but I'm sure that's changed with this photo. It's uh, not quite happiness, not quite contempt, somewhere in between, I suppose. It looks like the highest probabilities. And, um, and then the rest of this is just sort of information about the photo itself. Uh, you know, whether or not I'm bald, I'm not sure what invisible is. That's a little, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, hair color. Anyway, all these really interesting attributes that I could, you know, getting back to that second or third slide, things I might be able to use in a creative approach to a self-drawing program. Uh, for, ref for reference, let me show you what Google Cloud Vision does. Same kind of a demo. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to try to make a really happy face. There we go. It's all fake. Don't worry. <laughs> I <laughs> OK, so similar sort of thing. We have all the coordinates that identify where my face is in this image. Uh, they're named a little bit differently. Google likes to shout its parameters at me in all caps for some reason. I don't know. Um, the points are a little bit different. I really can't speak to the advantage or disadvantage of one approach versus the other. Scroll way down. Let's get to the more interesting stuff at the bottom. OK. And so now we have things like uh, joy likelihood. Very unlikely. <laughs> well, that's interesting. That was not what I expected. Anger like very unlikely. Surprise. Unlikely. OK, I will do a more traditional smile if I can muster one, and let's see if it does a little bit better. <laughs> OK, that's kind of, well, that's not very good. Let me try this again. OK, that was a pretty cheesy, thick smile. Let's go down, see if it fooled Google. Very likely. OK. All right, sure. Um, and now, so those were, let me get back to my slides here. So those are two web-based approaches. You kind of get the idea of how it works. The, the setup is a little clunky. You have to do two fetches and work with blobs and whatnot. But once you get there, it's, it's 
I'm not going to say it's easy, because easy is always relative. You never say it's easy. But it's you know, reasonably simple to follow, I think, so far. Of course, it took me hours to get right. But. Um, so the advantage is it's very feature-rich and very fast, given the amount of uh, you know, variety of data we're getting back. You're heavily dependent on your provider. That's a disadvantage to this approach. Um, it requires a request, so it's not going to work offline. Uh, the, and like I said, the initial setup is a little bit clunky. You have to do a couple of fetches, play with blobs, things like that. So let's look at the pure client side approach with a couple different libraries here. So I'm going to focus on that first one on the list, the faceapi.js library. It's built on top of TensorFlow. I will confess I do not know 100% what that means on some level. I, see, I can say that very confidently, but anyway, I'm just being honest. Um, and so here is, again, a quick sort of high-level pseudocode example of how we might go about using faceapi.js to do a similar thing where we see if there is a human face in the webcam. So we have our video element. We're pumping out the media capture data to that. We're including the script in our uh, file. We're getting the video element on the page. I'm obviously not showing you all the media capture code. And then we have this function that loads all of the different models that come with faceapi.js. This is actually, those are, I know those are TensorFlow generated models. There we go, that's where it comes in. Um, and so it takes a while because it's all happening inside the browser. It's going to vary with the speed of your machine. Um, so we load those models. And then once they're loaded, we uh, specify a few parameters we want to pass to the faceapi. Uh, object, and then we call a method called detect single face, or multiple faces is a different method. And we try to see if there's anything there, and then we act on the results. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. Similar thing. I will look at the camera. I will make a very neutral face if I can <laughs> find it. I can't. OK. And then we wait. See, this one takes a minute. OK. And so let's look at the, oh, it kind of screwed. Oh, interesting. Um, oh, it's because I stepped away. I was moving while I did it. Let me try that one more time. OK, it's a little better. So again, we have all the different coordinates where my different landmarks are. We don't have quite as many landmarks. We don't have all the strange technical terms for points on the face that I don't know. Um, we do have, there are some methods that come with faceapi.js that allow me to draw specific features more easily. You can kind of see that on display with the way my eyes and my eyebrows and things are, are highlighted over here. And then we also can do some uh, expression detection, similar to the other APIs, and it's entirely on the client side. So here are the probabilities of different things that I'm feeling. So there's a 95% chance that's a neutral expression that's pretty accurate, I think. A f almost 4% chance that I'm happy uh, and then extremely small percent chance here of being fearful, et cetera, et cetera. It's kind of fun. Uh, so there's the face API.js. This is happening entirely in my browser. I could um, do it offline. It would work great. Uh, let's see. So advantages, obviously, there's no request needed. It all happens on the client side. That's very cool. You could theoretically train your own models and extend this and add features. You could recognize different features on the face. I don't think it recognizes glasses offhand, so that might be one example of a feature you could add. Um, you could also have it, you can use this for facial recognition, not just detection. You could have it uh, create a model of your specific face and then create a website that only does things when your specific face or, I guess, a photo of you is in front of the camera. Um, disadvantages, it's slow to initially load. This is like a year old MacBook Pro, so it's fairly fast for the most part. And you could see it's not instantaneous. If you, you could theoretically do this on your mobile device too. It might be extra slow depending on what you're doing there. It's, um, it, it's kind of a gimmick really in some ways. But, um, and it, like I said, it's computationally expensive. Your laptop will do double duty as a heater if you start playing with these long enough. Um, I'm going to touch very quickly on one other uh, entirely client-side based approach that does not use any machine learning TensorFlow-based stuff. It's called OpenCV.js. I only recently learned about it, so I don't really have too many demos. Um, but it's a JavaScript port of the OpenCV project, which has been around since 1999. It's really cool. I've played with it a little bit. It's, um, it's been ported thanks to WebAssembly. I think there's a talk about WebAssembly tomorrow, so I'm, gonna, I'm planning on going, it's you. There's a go to her talk. <laughs> WebAssembly is cool. It makes this possible, and it made it really fast. It's really fun to play with. Um, so yeah, it's uh, built on the OpenCV project. They ported some of the functionality of that over to JavaScript, including facial recognition, uh, lots of other tools for image processing and other really cool things, um, including basic face detection. Because I have not yet made my own demos with this, I wanted to show you 
couple demos that they have on the site just to show you. So here's the stock photo. I'm gonna, here's the code you can play with using OpenCV. I'm going to click the button. Boom, it finds it. I don't know if you can see that very well, but her eyes are highlighted and, and the woman's face. Um, that was really fast, right? That's the, my understanding and appreciation so far is this is an extremely fast way to go about doing facial detection because it's, instead of calculating a very sort of abstract, complicated model, which a lot of machine learning approaches do, it, um, there's a sort of specifically designed formula, like algorithm for faces that it's using. So that's kind of cool, and I look forward to playing with that a little bit more. Um, let's see here. And lastly, but not least, I guess, the Shape Detection API. So this is a native API that you have to enable by going into the flags under Chrome. Um, but once you do that, all of the code you see up there is basically all you need to start using the Shape Detection API. It's, it's about as easy, again, in a relative way, it's, it's as easy as using, um, like, say, the Geolocation API or even the Media Capture API. I actually find it's mildly simpler because there's fewer parameters you can send. And so that's, that's it. In those, in those lines of code, we can detect if there is a face in an image or a canvas object or a video or something like that. We don't have to do any of that double fetch stuff. We can just send an HTML element to it, basically. Oh, I lied. There was one more. Sorry. <laughs> this is the code to uh, initially set up the face detector. Then we capture our faces in the faces variable. Oh, that's right. Okay, and then we can just iterate through our found faces. Um, let me show you a demo really quickly of what that looks like. And this is kind of a funny story. So same thing. You're used to this by now. Click on this. Do this. Oh, hold on. Let me try it again. There we go. Oh, okay. I see. Let me, let me do that again. OK, that's more what I expected. And so, yeah, that was really fast. As you noted, that's uh, a pretty clear advantage. Um, let me go back here. So the advantage to the Shape Detection API is it's a very simple implementation, not a lot of code. It's a little easier to understand, a very fast API. Um, no requests. It works entirely on the client. It works on any Chromium-based project. So this works in Microsoft Edge. It works in Electron. My demo this that you're seeing is actually an Electron app that I bundled up with all my demos. And it would work offline. It's, it's kind of cool. Um, it's unclear when it might go into production. That's a disadvantage. It's kind of buggy. Believe it, this actually did not work until this morning. <laughs> I was prepared to tell you this API does not work, but then I upgraded Mac OS. And it doesn't work in Chrome, but I tried it in Electron, and it works really well in Electron. I found that out hours ago, so I have no idea what to tell you. <laughs> um, and then uh, it's comparatively feature limited. We don't get expressions and feelings. We, we, we just get the coordinates of the landmarks, which is still pretty good. Um, so here's the, because I have like one minute probably left here, here's the final version of where I ended up on my Camera Lucida project for my self-portraits. Oops, that's the wrong one. Let me do this. Ended up here, slightly more interesting drawing tool. Freeze the video. I'm going to use the face API, and I'm going to highlight the landmarks. I'm going to wait a moment here, see what it does. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Try one more time. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll have to look into that. Anyway, um, it did become a more elaborate drawing tool, and I'm not 100% sure why that's not working at the moment. I'm also a little afraid to start debugging it when I have like 30 seconds left. So let me show you, if I can, uh, two last things. I'm just going to go for it. So here is, this is not a self-portrait, but I was using the same technology and I made another fun kind of a thing uh, using the face API.js. And I thought it'd be fun to make a, something that can sing to me when I'm not feeling well. So if I smile, <laughs> it knows I'm feeling happy. And if I make a sad face, <laughs> let's see if I can make a sad face. <laughs> there we go. It starts playing me a song. Oh. Starts playing a song, trying to cheer me up. And if I make an angry face, it should stop playing the song. There we go. I get away from.
from that. Uh, the very last thing I'm going to show you, this is a whole different world that I'm exploring right now. So uh, the world of Magenta.js, which is a beautiful project by Google about um, applying machine learning and TensorFlow to art specifically, music and drawings. And what I did is I took art that I made, some of it's like generative computer art, some of it's real life art, and I applied it to my funny headshot that doesn't really look like me anymore. And basically, you can use Magenta.js to ascertain the style of a particular piece of work and then apply that style to something else. So I will click on the button here. Wait a moment. And you can see over there, this style has been applied to that. And that's something I'm also working on integrating into this self-portrait project. So I am out of time. Quick thoughts on privacy. It's not all fun and games. We should really think about facial recognition in a very serious way. I hate rushing through that. But um, yeah, that's a very serious thing to contend with. I wouldn't feel right if I didn't mention that. This is actually a good way to defeat facial recognition, strangely. Kind of ridiculous, but interesting. Uh, so in summary, there are basically three different approaches that you can take to facial recognition in JavaScript. And let's not forget about the privacy issues. Kuala Punal. <laughs>